Today, we're going to look at a very simple program that does a very simple job. So this is the program called Color Picker. Now, this isn't a GUI application. It is the absolute bare minimum for what you need a color picker to do. There's some more complicated GTK applications out there, but this one will just run in your terminal. And it's very similar to something like Xprop, where it will just change your cursor and then we'll let you pick something. So without wasting any more time, let's just have a look at what the application actually is. Now, if you want to install it, you can get it from the AUR. The other alternative, if you're not on Arch, is you can go to the GitHub page and you can see the dependencies down here, get the dependencies, and then just run the make file. But because we are on Arch, we can just go through that process. And I'm just gonna install it with yay. So yay dash capital S, color with the American spelling, no dash or anything like that, and then picker not add an extra letter we don't need. So I've already got it installed, so I'm just gonna quit out of this process, but go through that and then you'll get it installed. So as I was mentioning before, if we just run this now, as you can see, all it does is change my cursor and it's waiting for something to happen down here. So if we start clicking on stuff, like let's click on this here and then something else, something else, something else. As you can see, as I'm clicking on stuff, it'll output the color of the thing that I clicked on down the bottom here, and it will just keep going until I say to cancel the application. So obviously to cancel that, all we have to do is go Control C. Okay, now there are some options for this application and some of them are actually really useful. There isn't a man page from what I know, at least on the AUR installation. Yes, there is no man page for it. So if we go color picker dash H, we'll see there's a few options in here. So the first one we care about is this dash dash short one. And this one I'm actually using in the thing that I've set up to basically make this application pretty useful. So if we go color picker dash dash short, and then we, let's just pick something random here. As you can see, all it's outputting this time is the hex value. So it's completely getting rid of the RGB value and it's just doing the hex value. Sadly, there's no way to do the other way around where you just have only the RGB value. That would be nice to see, but being able to just use the hex value, I would say is good enough. Most of the time, most things will support both RGB and also hex values. So that one is fine, but let's go with another one. If we go with the dash dash one shot option, run this, and now as you can see, it cancels after selecting a single color. Okay, that's useful as well. What about the dash dash preview option though? So you might be able to see it down the bottom here, but as I highlight stuff, or as I, I guess, hover over stuff, it changes this little color box down the bottom here. So this is basically showing the color that you're currently selecting. So if I click on this, the color it outputs down here is that color that was just being shown in the preview box. So I can do this for anything up here, and as you can see, it's just showing whatever I'm hovering over right now, which is also a really cool feature. But what if we were to combine all of those features and also combine it with something like a clipboard manager. Now, why would we wanna do that? So, something that I frequently do is I want to go and make some custom color schemes for say, random applications like a Spotify TUI or for my Vim or just for my terminal. And sometimes what I wanna do is I actually wanna theme it around something. So for example, with Spotify TUI, I want the green that's being used in the application to match the green that's used by Spotify. So what I can do is I can select that color from the Spotify logo and then instead of just having it output to my terminal, what I could do instead is I could have it output to my clipboard. And the way that would work is a little something like this script that I've written up. So let's just have a look at that. Now I've just got it in my scripts folder and it's just called CP color. So pretty much all this is gonna do is run color picker with the dash dash short option. So as we saw before, that will just output the hex value. I've got the dash dash one shot option, so it'll just cancel after selecting one color and the dash dash preview option, just so we can see exactly what I'm actually selecting. And then all I'm doing with that is I'm just piping it into Xclip with the dash selection set to clipboard. Now, what Xclip is gonna do is basically Xclip will let you just modify your clipboard. And it's a very, very simple application to do it. There's a couple of others that will let you do very similar things like Excel as well, but I've just decided to use Xclip today. Now, if we just run this, pretty much all it's gonna do is let me select a color. So CP color. And now as we can see down the bottom, it's got a little preview window down here. And this is just showing the color we're currently selecting. So let's say we wanted to select this green here. Now, Nothing's actually happened on our terminal because it's just put it into our clipboard. But if we paste that in, as we can see, 
there is some sort of hex value here, but is this the hex value that we just picked? We can go and check that by just pasting it into say DuckDuckGo for example, or you could use GIMP or just anything else. And as we can see, that is the color that we just selected. Now another use case for this actually does have to do with GIMP as well. So occasionally when I'm making thumbnails, I want to use a very specific color. Now obviously I could load the image into GIMP and then use the color picker actually within GIMP. But the other way that I could do it is just run a external application, select the color like that, and then just paste the color in. So that would look a little something like this. So let's just open up GIMP and have a look. Let's say we wanted to bring, I don't know, some random image in here, like this one right here. And then if we wanted to select a color, we could obviously choose the color picker tool here and then select a color within the image. But the problem with the color picker within GIMP is as you can see, it doesn't let us pick something outside of the image. So if you wanted to use some sort of color that we don't have readily available within an image, like, like let's say we wanted to select this color up the top here. Now what we would have to do is we'd have to screenshot that and then put it into GIMP and then select the color and then do what we want with the color. But what we could do instead is just select the color directly and then basically paste it in. So we've got the color selected. Then if we go into GIMP, we can just paste that in, get rid of the extra characters that it adds on get rid of that and as we can see now we have the color selected within the program and there's a bunch of other little use cases like this for the color picker as well now i did mention the one that i normally use which is just for making themes i'm not really going to go into that one just now because it's pretty straightforward how it works pretty much all i would do is the same thing i did earlier where i select a color and then i could just paste it somewhere like i wanted to paste it in say my vim theme or i want to paste it in my terminal theme it's pretty much the same sort of workflow now this obviously isn't the only color picker application out there. Like you have things such as K-Color Chooser, or G-Pick, or Pick, or G-Color 2, Slick Pick, Deli Color, Color Grab. But as you can see, all of the ones here are GUI applications, and they're more color selectors rather than just color pickers. For example, if we look at, say, G-Color 2, this one will let you do selecting based on hue, saturation, RGB colors, opacity, or you can just directly put it in a hex value. So this is very similar to what GIMP actually does, where it's still a color picker, but it's also a color selector. And that's not really what we were looking at today. But the problem also with using a GUI application like this is that they generally don't have ways to interact with them really easily from the terminal. Now, I'm not sure about these applications here. I can't really say anything about them. I haven't tried them for myself, but it's fairly common for GUI applications to not have a way to work like that. And the problem with that is that unlike a program such as Color Picker, where it just outputs to stand it out, you're kind of limited to the way that you work with it. Whereas with Color Picker, because it just outputs to stand it out, you could say, just work with it from your terminal, or you could do something like what we did today and just work with it with your clipboard, or you could output to a notification, or you could do a bunch of other things. But when you're just working with a GUI application, there's not generally a way to do that. And that's part of the reason why I like working with little terminal applications like this. Also, it's just kind of cool to work with something that does just one very simple job and literally nothing else. All this thing does is let you pick colors and will give you some small niceties along the side to just make it a little bit easier, like say the one shot picks or the preview window, but it doesn't go overboard. It just gives you the bare minimum of stuff that you need to make it comfortable to use. Now, the reason I did a video on this is because I've wanted a color picker application for so long, but for whatever reason, I just hadn't bothered to search for it. So when someone sent me this on my Discord, I realized, oh, I am really dumb for the fact that I didn't have this within my workflow because what I was doing before is I would say, let's say I wanted a color from my desktop, just of something random. What I would do is I would screenshot it, put that screenshot into GIMP, use the eyedropper tool to actually select the color, then copy the color out of that into what I wanted to use it for. Or I'll just put it into a website that would let me do color picking as well. When instead I could have just run color picker and then just piped it into my clipboard and be completely done. So hopefully no one else had the exact same predicament I had, but if you did and you just didn't know about color picker and you needed a color picker in your life, then hopefully this application is helpful and hopefully this video actually helped you out with something. Now, before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Tiki, Andrew Road, Tony, Yoku, Leia, Ray, and Zilva. So if you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy just 
anything on Amazon with those links and I'll get a small kickback for it. So there's links to buy my gear on this channel or just anything else out there. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. Also remember to go check out my podcast, Tech Over Tea. That is available on Library and YouTube as well as just anywhere else that you can watch podcasts. And also go subscribe to this channel on Library as well. I think we're a bit over 5,300 subscribers on Library now. Maybe 5,200. I'm not sure. I haven't actually checked at this point. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.